Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and bringing on a bite-sized piece. As today, we need to talk about a couple of things about going on as far as high-level market manipulation. And we're going to go over a lot of different stories, a lot of different things, and we're going to take uh, the bad with the good. So as far as bad, first up, Guggenheim CEO now says crypto are tulips after they predicted a $600,000 Bitcoin. We're going to take a look at the U.S. Treasury, Treasury unveils of Biden's proposed tax measure and what that means as far as people who are dabbling in cryptocurrencies like ourselves. And then on far as uh, uh, more bad news or manipulation, it states here institutions may be dropping Bitcoin for gold. So says uh, friends of the show, JP Morgan, just kidding, they're not friends whatsoever. And that is the bad part. So then what I want to take a look at is the flip side of that same coin as the good things that are going on in the space. First up, ARK's Kathy Wood predicts Bitcoin could hit 500K. Then we're going to take a look at just a little graph as far as like corrections go and how deep they've gone in the past. We're going to take a look at a Chinese firm investing 25 million in crypto uh, processing or mining data centers uh, in the United States. Also, uh, BlockFi messes up and sends people a lot of uh, Bitcoin. And finally, uh, we'll take a look at... Uh, Fed Chairman Jerome Powell talking about central bank digital currencies or CBDCs in the United States. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look at what the market. And I'm going to spend uh, really quick going over this because we got so much to cover. Uh, first of all, total market cap is almost 1.8 trillion. We took quite a big dip. Uh, the coins themselves, we're seeing Bitcoin up a little bit, 41,000, Ethereum 27. So, I mean, it's just a sideways day, really. There's a little bit, there's probably some that are making up fantastic gains. But really, uh, this is where we're at. I think we're going to trade sideways for quite a, a little bit of time until things start to break out. But anyhow, let's just go over today's stories and see what we got. So this first one, and before I go on, uh, there was a great video uh, with James over at Invest Answers. And it's this one right here, Crypto Crash Update, How Markets Are Manipulated. It's great. I actually uh, shared it on my channel. Go ahead and check out James. He's got some great information. And uh he talks about manipulation like we're going to talk about right now. But this is just one of those things where, like, you have to understand that people in our space right now, uh, they, get, they get news from a lot of different variety of sources, but we're just a small percentage of, of investors. And in all honesty, this is, these are the types of things that people actually hear about uh, as far as uh, cryptocurrency. And they say, and they always seem to amplify the negative for some reason. And the reason is because in, in uh, mainstream media, Negativity sells. Negativity sells a lot more than positivity, and that's why every time you took they all turn on the news, you're going to see you know fires and wars and everything else that is breaking out. They don't really cover too many good things, and these are the types of things they actually cover. So, this is what Scott Menard, who's the CIO of Guggenheim Investments, he's and remember, he said that Bitcoin's going to 600k not too long ago, and he says, look, crypto has proven to be tulip mania as prices rise. Tulip bulbs and cryptocurrencies multiply until supply swamps demand at previous market clearing prices. And I would love to say that he's wrong, <laughs> but he's not. He's absolutely correct. And I know that seems a little bit odd, but here's what you have to understand. I see so many different projects coming out now, and I get an email of probably everyone to actually talk about them on my channel. And I turn down a lot. But it's a lot different than 2017. 2017, it was all like, hey, we got a white paper. Would you like to cover this? And I'm like, no, it makes any sense. Uh, but now, uh, you know, a lot of these projects, they actually have a working product. Uh, they actually have things that are actually they're doing. They have real world utility. And I think a lot of them are just overlapping. There's a lot of different projects that just do the exact same thing. And it's almost like pharmaceuticals. Uh, pharmaceuticals, you get a lot of different drugs that are like Me Too medications. And, uh, you know, they may come out, they may do well, but I don't think that we have the room right now for all these different projects. I think only the strong will survive. When he talks about Tulip Mania, he has a point, but he's not saying like, like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Cardano are like all Tulip Mania and they're going to go away. It's not what he's saying. He's saying like a lot of these projects will go away because there is a, there's too much supply and there's not enough demand, which I think makes a lot of sense. So in this situation, uh, I can see what he says, but... The thing, the people that will cover this, will just talk about the, we'll talk about the negative, and they'll say all the cryptocurrency is tulip mania. So I just want to make you make you aware of what is going on, and uh, you will see more of those stories like that. On top of this, we've also got a nice little uh, dip in the market thanks to Biden administration. Hey, it is what it is. U.S. Treasury unveils Biden's tax measures. So 
This is for the American Families Plan tax compliance agenda. They're trying to raise uh, money to pay for this. I want to say it's like a, almost a trillion dollar type of thing or 800 billion type of uh, project they want to get going. So the report notes that another significant concern is virtual. In the report, it says another significant concern is virtual currencies, which have grown to two trillion in market cap. Hey, jokes on you. It's uh, 1.8. And it states cryptocurrency, and this was actually in the report, which I think is actually kind of bullish that the United States is taking a look at this and going, you know what, maybe we should take a big, uh, more of a look about what's going on. It states cryptocurrency already poses a significant detection problem by facilitating illegal activity broadly, including tax evasion, which of course they're going to say that even though it's very odd because you can find everything on the blockchain. If you want to look at tax evasion, just take a look at all all the banks and the billionaires out there and what they do, but you know that's a whole other topic. And um, further on the report, it says, despite continuing constituting a relatively small portion of business income today, cryptocurrency transactions are likely to rise in importance in the next decade. And this is the thing. This report gets it. They know how big crypto is going to be, so they're gonna to try to get ahead of it right now. I think they learned a lesson uh, you know, a while ago for uh, the internet, and they want to really just start to really hammer home the regulation. I think regulation to me is, it's it's like cake. A slice is pretty good, uh, but the entire cake, eating that, is just, just ruin your whole night. And uh, I think that a little regulation is good, but unfortunately, when you have a lot of people involved, sometimes things just go a little bit haywire. And then lastly, it states, as with crash, cash transactions, businesses that receive crypto assets with a fair market value more than 10,000 would also be reported on. But notice here that says businesses that receive crypto assets. So I don't know how that's gonna work. If, if you're talking about LLC, S Corps and C Corps or uh, sole proprietors who actually have a business and an EI number, if they receive uh, cryptocurrency, they have to report it as opposed to like a uh, random individual like yourself who gets more than ten thousand uh, dollars as far as crypto do you have to report it and then how does it actually work as far as decentralized finance you know uh, or as far as like staking if you make over ten thousand uh, and staking and rewards would you have to report it every time these are the things that they have to hash out and there is no end in sight for that so i uh, expect a lot of volatility a lot of people posturing in uh, congress we'll see how it all works out but that is those two pieces and then finally we'll finish up with some more fud which is uh, institutions maybe dropping Bitcoin for gold. So says JP Morgan. Again, uh, James over there had a really good answer to this, but I will just, the whole thing is about, I'm not even gonna read it. It's, it's, it's all about uh, the futures market and how people are getting out. And I will say, I will say this, and of course it was covered on CNBC. I will say this, if you take a look at the gold price, the spot price right now, uh, over the last seven days, uh, the price of gold has gone up. I think we can see it right here. Price of gold, yeah, it's silver go. Silver's down there a little bit, but same thing. And if you take a look at that, you're like, oh, maybe people are dropping it. And because, uh, you know, people, gold bugs, which I own gold, I own silver, I own Bitcoin. They talk about how it is a store of value. So you're like, well, you know, 1820 to almost 1880 is pretty good. Well, let's take a look at uh, 30 days, how to do in that. Again, that's pretty great because it went from 1780 all the way up to 1880. So, you know, a pretty good store of value, not too much of a fluctuation. Well, then let's take a look back over six months. And you can see that actually over six months, it was almost at, almost at 2000, dropped all the way to 1700. So when the gold bugs talk about volatility and, and cryptocurrency, and then let's take a look at a year, same thing. 1700, 2100, back to 1700. They're in that range. So if you bought right here, you think you're a genius. You're like, oh, I'm going to get, get some gold. And then it just drops down to 700. You're like, what the heck happened to that store of value narrative? Golds, bugs, and uh, here we are. So again, uh, if, if JP Morgan is going to say that that, that is, is what's happening, I don't believe that, especially with uh, the data that we've seen. Again, check out James's channel. And uh, this, I think, is just one more piece, bigger piece of the puzzle. Let me understand the comment section as far as the FUD. Let's go into the positive. So this, Kathy Wood predicts Bitcoin could hit 500,000. And this was a, it was a pretty good one. And she just did like a little piece because this was during the whole drop a couple of days ago. And this was with Bloomberg's uh, Carol Mass, Carol Masser, Arkinvest CEO. 
Bitcoin would still reach 500K, so she's got pretty strong hands. Wood says that recent correction has boosted the chances of a Bitcoin exchange ETF being approved by the, uh, by the SEC, then central product is less likely to be greenlit when priced at all-time highs. I guess. I, the, the big thing that the SEC is looking at as far as is in the market is manipulation. And of course, they're like, we're not going to approve an ETF if there's so much manipulation so people can make so much money. But here's the thing. There's manipulation everywhere. I know they want to get their hands around it, and I don't think they're going to be, it's going to be an ETF without a little bit of regulation. So again, it goes hand in hand. If you want the price to go up, you're going to need a little bit of regulation so the big money players can get in and feel a little bit comfortable and they can uh, say, okay, well, now we're going to come in. But I believe we're on the right track, but I've been here in ETF for ooh, four years now, and uh, here we are. And then lastly, she states, I, and she's talking about Elon Musk, which... Actually, I'm not going to cover it. I don't really care. So, yeah, that's the whole thing about the, uh, the ETF and what Kathy Wood says. But she's still bullish on the 500000 And she said that they've her analysts have taken a real deep dive into it, taken a look, and she goes, we still are on the right track for a half million dollar Bitcoin. The big question is, when is that going to happen? I still hold it's going to be 130000 between 130000 and 150000 by the end of this year. And uh, we'll see how it all works out. Let me know what you think of the comment section on that one. And then I just want to go over quickly blow this up a nice little graph as far as corrections go and i want you to notice something this one right here this was in 2013 to 2016 bitcoin dropped 87 percent. and here's all the things that happened during that time china bans bitcoin <laughs> remember that china bans bitcoin well actually they just did it again and bitcoin exchange mount Gox, mount Gox suffers hack regulatory troubles and eventual bankruptcy and then we see another thing here December 17th, 2017 to 2018, it dropped 83% again. 530 million of Japan's uh, largest OTC crypto exchange, CoinCheck, was hacked. And on top of the fact that we were just in the four-year cycle and it went down. And then lately, between April and roughly a month, we lost 51%. That's a lot of money. And it all came, to, they, they talk about Elon Musk tweets that Tesla will accept Stop accepting Bitcoin payments. And when you take a look at this, it seems pretty awful, right? But in all honesty, really what's going on is people are just, whales are just accumulating. People are just getting into the market. And the people that haven't gotten the market, they're able to kind of pull that train back and get into crypto because they know all the different levers to pull. So don't be, don't be alarmed when you see these things. And especially like the other articles that we saw about, because all the different hacks and China banning everything else, all those stories just play into part of the, the total market cap just dropping. But there's one thing you have to remember. Every single time it has dropped, it has come back even stronger. I remember in 2017, when we hit $20,000 Bitcoin. And it was like, that's amazing. That's a huge amount of money. And our market cap was uh, $860, $840 billion. And it was like, wow, we almost hit a trillion. Now, when we take a look at it, can you imagine if we go below $1 trillion? People will be losing their minds like, this sucks. This is awful. So take a look at the big picture about what's going on, and I think you'll see uh, where this whole market is going. Anyhow, that's uh, those two pieces, and then here's some more good news. Uh, we just talked about how China had banned cryptocurrency again, and you can't use peer-to-peer, -peer, and you can't you know, trade between uh, two people, and OTC desks are all shutting down, which I think would be a, a big problem for uh, places like um, Binance, because a lot of their customers aren't in China. And um, we'll see how this all works out. But I think this is a good move here as a uh, Chinese firm, BTC, uh, invests $25 million in crypto mining data center in Texas. So the whole thing is this. I'm going to skip the first part because I don't want to spell asleep reading it. Uh, the first part here is the total power capacity of the Texas mining center is 57 megawatts with more than 85% of its power generated by clean and low carbon energy. So all the... All the people are like, it's so awful. Well, now you can get 85%. And then they're going to say that, hey, as time goes on, we're going to move even to like 95% renewables. So that's the big thing. So BIT's current data centers in uh, the current place that they're actually invested into. We're in uh, Sichuan province, China, which runs 100% on clean energy. The company claims, here's the problem with China. It's tough to go in there and say, we need to do an audit and take a look at these things. They're like, yeah, no, no, thank you. So... The great news is that China is trying to shut down everything over there, and especially with crypto, because these miners 
Well, if they can't sell their Bitcoin that they're mining, how do they run the operation? I think it's an interesting situation, especially with what could happen in the United States. This could shift the whole dynamic over to other countries, especially in West Texas. The reason why West Texas is so big, because first of all, those mining operations, you want to keep them cool. And you want to actually get some cheap electricity. The thing about West Texas, where I live, is that there's a ton of wind, wind and solar energy. And uh, for those type of situations, this is perfect for Bitcoin. Also on top of that, it gets super hot. So I'm like, why would you guys ever do that? Well, they have this liquid cooling process, some type of gel that they put them in or some kind of liquefied gel that really cools down the whole thing. And we had covered this like six months ago, seven months ago. So you get, you get really a twofer. You get low cost energy, uh, renewable energy, and you have a way to cool things so much. And of course, uh, just to build things over there is not too expensive, a little, bit, a little bit more than in China. So I think this is a great move. It moves it to America. America becomes, again, I hate to say it, uh, more of a, of a power uh, in the uh, crypto space because everything's kind of moving into this area and moving out of China. So maybe all the people that were like so nervous about, well, it's centralized in China. Well, now it's going to be centralized in America. So <laughs> whatever. And uh, we'll see how that all works out. But, uh, and it states here, the new operation in Texas can help the local economy. Great. That sounds good. And that's pretty much the whole thing in there. So I'm just excited that we see a lot of different uh, Bitcoin operations, mining power plants moving to Texas. And this is like the third or fourth one. So great. I'm happy. I'll take it. And to finish up, just because it's just random news, blocked by messed up promo payments, transfers up to 700 Bitcoins mistakenly. And just so you know, your funds are safe. It wasn't a lot, but it's enough to cover, I think. So BlockFi, they overpaid bonuses to a group of customers. If you don't know BlockFi, it's uh, it's kind of like Celsius. Just I I hate and Celsius are gonna scream at the at the uh, monitor, but it's kind of like that. You know, you can you can earn uh, uh, different yield for the different cryptocurrencies that you have. All you gotta do is put it on the platform and then off you go. I don't use it personally. I just use Celsius, so I can't wait to talk about BlockFi. But they mistakenly overpaid bonuses to a group of customers, with some receiving up to 700 Bitcoin in their accounts. The payments were related to a stablecoin promotion, you know, like, you know, just like how you, you, you put in Bitcoin, you get so many Bitcoin or stablecoins or whatever else. Well, they just pay everybody in Bitcoin. So instead of $700, I guess, or $700 in stablecoins, it was 700 Bitcoin. Wow. The issue first blew up in social media, where customers of the company gloated about the payments, while others were concerned about the financial stability of the platform after issuing these oversized bonuses. And this was a statement, just so everybody's clear. The company's exposure is currently approximately 10 million and decreasing quickly as clients are running returning funds, which is amazing. I wouldn't return squat. We are incredibly grateful for our clients understanding the mistake and returning funds that did not belong to them. So hey, it all works out. You appeal to the to the humanity and people and they and they get back. The company declared this mistake doesn't imply any financial risks, having over 15 billion assets under management. This means they got a lot of money, so it's just just 10 million, no big deal. And that customer's funds are safe, uh, even though the confidence has eroded. So, look, everybody makes mistakes. Hopefully, they're not huge mistakes, and uh, they say it's okay. But uh, for me personally, I'm not going to use BlockFi. I mean, Celsius has done pretty well by me, and they haven't liquid they haven't liquidated anybody. And this is the second big uh, incident that they have. The first one was March 2020, when we had that huge black swan event with the uh, coronavirus, and now recently we just had that uh, you know China bans Bitcoin and Elon Musk and like craziness. And we lost like, you know, 40% a day. They still don't liquidate liquid anybody. So I'm happy uh, with what they're doing. So good job, Celsius and uh, BlockFi. Uh, yeah. Learn from the mistakes, I guess. I don't know. All right. And lastly, the Fed chairman, Jerome Powell, said that central banks will produce a, a paper on, on CBDC. And I was going to, I'm not even going to go with the thing. I think it's, I think it's funny that people think that Central banks and banks are going to be the innovators. It's just ridiculous. Now, we've got stable coins, we've got crypto, and this is just one more thing they're trying to do to just keep a foothold. I'm glad they're doing it, but again, I think once they actually get the paper out and get the people to comment and all those things, it'll be like, well, thanks, you know. It's just kind of like, like when people, when Blockbuster was like, hey, we're gonna have, we're gonna come out with a streaming service better than Netflix. They're like, what? We don't need you guys. So, uh, so that's it. Um, I think this was probably room for it, and uh, we'll see how it works out. But uh, it just goes to show you that where things are moving. I was kind of worried that America would never catch up, but it looks like they're doing the right things. And even banks are starting to talk about custodying uh, crypto and 
and uh, you know, be in uh, an, an exchange essentially for it. We covered that before about you know hundreds of banks thanks to NYDIG. So that's really it. We'll see how it goes. It's just a paper. It's not going to happen overnight because it's the it's the government. They're they're slow as molasses. Anyhow, that's it for today. So this is my last day in Puerto Rico. We we're supposed to do a meetup. I missed it because uh, I just didn't have I just didn't have time to all the things that we were trying to do. But uh, we'll be back very soon, and we'll go from there. And uh, I'll be putting out the uh, Puerto Rico video very soon about uh, you know legalities uh, with the lawyer that I use, with the uh, uh, property manager. Uh, with the uh, real estate agent, uh, with the accountants, and with the people that actually live here. So put it all together in a nice little package. You'll have it soon. And that's it for today. So look, no one a little long. There's a lot of things going on. But uh, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps tremendously. Consider subscribing. That's it for today. See you in the next one. Bye.